Hi, Jacob Kaluzny here and welcome to Instant Threat Modeling, a series of 5-minute videos on threat modeling made instantly here on the whiteboard. Today's topic is Mobile Application Attack Surface. Before we secure a mobile application, let's have a look what we have. Your application talks with your server-side API, which is written by the developer, who has the permission to push new application packages to Google Play and Apple Store. There are also some third-party advertisement and tracking APIs. And the application itself, it can be downloaded by the user. Now, your application uses the storage and logs, but on the same device, there are other applications. Who are the threat actors? We've got the application user that can try to look for excessive information, sensitive information stored somewhere in the storage or logs or secrets that are hard-coded in the source code of the application package that comes from Google Play or Apple Store. Application users and external attackers can try to attack the API, so look for business logic vulnerabilities, technical vulnerabilities, SQL injections, uh, improper access control to some functions, to the methods or to the data, validation errors, denial of service, you name it. An external attacker, an anonymous attacker, can also try to distribute fake applications using the same name as your application. External attackers can attack the CICD pipeline and compromise the developer accounts. Distribution of malicious application via untrusted sources allowed to compromise mobile devices and install malware. Now, if malware is another application on the very same phone, it can try to access the storage and the logs of the original application. It will try to access the shared memory and also invoke the original application via insecure IPCs, so URL handlers, intents, exported activities. Malware will try to use known vulnerabilities in the phone, in the application or the third-party libraries zero days to compromise the phone or the application. Third-party advertisement and tracking libraries uh, come with some risk of a compromise via a third party. Sensitive information unintentionally leaking from the application to the third party APIs. This third party API code is controlled by the third party. So this developer has no control over what is written there. Then we have physical attacks. Physical access can be either permanent, think stolen phone, or temporary, compromised in a bar. OASP Mobile Application Security Verification Standard MASVS, mentions a lot of attacks with physical access to the phone, including access to the sensitive information stored uh, in the shared memory, in storage, in logs, and also compromising the phone via uh, zero-day exploits to jailbreak it or to root it. And the last one, this is uh, proximity attacks in various protocols, think uh, Wi-Fi, GSM, Bluetooth, we can have SSL problems between the application and the API and also known exploits in the firmware or software here on the phone in various protocols, for example, Blueborn exploiting the Bluetooth stack on mobile phones. Fake stations. When it comes to Wi-Fi, evil twin access points or simply fake BTS when it comes to GSM. Instant mitigations. All server-side API require a penetration test. Um, have a look at the OWASP top 10 for APIs to mitigate potential attacks from malware. Uh, run a review against mobile application security verification standard. Your CI-CD pipeline requires a threat model. All connections to third parties require a review penetration test or at least a risk assessment. Again, mobile application security verification standard to mitigate physical access attacks and man-in-the-middle protection against the physical proximity attacks. This was instant threat modeling of mobile application attack surface. Please let me know if you need help with your app. Otherwise, all previous episodes at securing.b slash ITM. Cheers.